Thanks, David and worship team. Welcome, folks, to Emmanuel Baptist. My name is Will Orschel, one of the pastors here, and uh, just glad to be with you on our communion Sunday, which is the first Sunday of the month. And uh, yeah, this is probably the most casual I've been at this church since I came here in June of 1979. Is that fair, Galen? Yeah, he's shaking his head yes. I, I rolled up here just about this time of the year, just having graduated from uh, high school out in Los Angeles and uh, drove out here in my VW Beetle because my dad had just gotten uh, stationed out here at Wright Pat and uh, showed up at Emanuel Baptist Church in June of 1979. And I came to church dressed just like I did in California. I had shorts and flip-flops and a uh, shirt. The only difference is the shirt is said OP for Ocean Pacific on it, but that was about it. And uh, walked in and everybody had a suit on and all the women had long denim dresses. And I, and I looked over at my dad and I said, where have you brought us? And uh, he said, well, this is when we were standing at the back door. He says, well, uh, let's get on in. Of course, my dad had to sit in the front row every time we did. So we all marched in and sat in the front row. And, uh, and I'm still here 42 years later. What do you know? And after 42 years, I'm feeling kind of comfortable to uh, be dressed down a little bit. But let me tell you, it's the same word of God, right? That does not change. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, what was, uh, what was special about this last week? A lot of things. Got the 50th wedding. What? You were on, Sonia was on vacation. That's right. Things were quiet at church. Sonia was at vacation. It was good. It's a good week. Anything else special about this week? Memorial Day. Memorial Day. Yeah. That was this last Monday. We're, we're kind of we're done with that because we're on the next thing, right? You go to Walmart, all the memorial stuff is gone. What's on the shelves now? Fourth of July, Father's Day. They're ready for the next holiday, right? In America, we, we click through our holidays pretty quick, right? But um, I actually, before we get into communion today, I wanted us to reflect a little bit on Memorial Day and uh, a little bit on its impact here in Greene County. And part of the reason we even have a Memorial Day as well. So go ahead and give me that next slide. Do you guys know that uh, Memorial Day started off, it had a different name. It was called Decoration Day. And it was uh, established the year after the Civil War. Remember, the Civil War crossed five Aprils, April 61 through April 65. And in, and in in 1866, uh, in May of that year, families were trying to figure out how do we remember what we just went through for those last four years. And the spring flowers were coming up, and so families all across the nation and villages and little towns and out in the townships and stuff didn't know what else to do <laughs> but go visit the graves of all the men who died in the war. And uh, so they just went and gra got, grabbed flowers and went out there and spent some time at the graveyards. And this wasn't just one or two families. This was entire towns went and did this. Now think about that. When's the last time you were with an entire municipality that went to a cemetery? Well, probably never, but that's what happened in 1866. And this went on year after year, and eventually we declared it a, an, a, a holiday called Declaration Day, or Decoration Day, and it was to decorate the graves of those who had fallen during the Civil War. Now, that wasn't the last war we ever fought, and the next one that we lost a lot of folks in was World War I. And here we had fathers who... who were orphaned in the Civil War and sent their sons to die in World War I. And the generation before them had died and their children died. And so here we found our nation going back out again the year after that to the cemeteries. And we called it Memorial Day to not only remember the men and women who died in in that war, World War I, but also all of the, the families that have died in the previous wars as well, too. And so that's how we've come to our Memorial Day that we have today. But I, wanna, I want us to stop and just reflect a little bit about, go ahead and give me that next slide, 
about the Civil War and the enormity of death during the Civil War, something we can't even grasp today. Do you know, in the population back in 1860, this is from the 1860 census, was, was about 30 million, about 30, 30 and a half million people in the United States. In that four years of the war, 620,000 men died in that war. That was 2% of the entire population of the whole nation perished in the war. And at that time, if you had enlisted, one out of four of the young men that enlisted never came home from the north and the south. Think about that. A quarter of all the men that went to war never went home at that time. Give me the next slide. So, so our population today is about 330 million. 2% of our population today is 6.6 million people. Could you imagine losing 6.6 million men and women in a four-year time frame in, in the war? Can you, I mean, can you imagine what that would look like? That is four times the entire armed forces of the United States today. This is four times of every soldier, sailor, airman, and marine that are even in service today is the number that, so this would be like knowing everyone that you knew that's in the military today perishing times four. That was the enormity of what happened there in the Civil War. We can't, we can't even conceive of things like that today. I mean, we've gone to war lately, but nothing like this. As a matter of fact, the Civil War, up until lately, more men died in the Civil War than in all the wars, all the rest of the wars combined. World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Revolutionary, Spanish American, everything else, died in the Civil War as died in every other war. It's just recently with the, with the War on Terror that we kind of tipped the scales and, and it's a little bit less, but it's, it's, on, it's in the same order of magnitude. That's from the nation's perspective. Now, I want you to think a little bit about here in Greene County. Go ahead and give me that next slide. Ohio had more men enlisted in the Union Army in terms of percentage of population of any state in the Union. And they almost had the largest number of men in the Army. The only other state that had, a, a, uh, that had more men was, was New York, New York State. But Ohio was a close second. And Greene County had more men enlist in a county than any other county in Ohio. Think about that. So percentage-wise, there are more men from Greene County, from any other county in the United States that went to war. And there were so many men that enlisted here in Greene County and Xenia that they had to set up a camp to get them enlisted. It was called Camp Xenia. And it was on fairgrounds right now. It's not, not where the current fairgrounds are. There's actually a fair road over on the east end. That's where the old fairgrounds used to be in Xenia. And that's where the enlistment camp was for Greene County. And so that's where you would show up. There were, there were four regiments. They were principally formed out of men from the Greene County. There was the 74th, the 110th, the 94th, and the 41st. And there was an artillery battery from Greene County as well, too. And if you go to the courthouse today... There's a cannon on the courthouse, and that cannon is from the 10th Artillery Battery. And if you were over at the Ohio Veterans Children's Home, there used to be two cannons, remember, that was on Home Avenue at the bridge. It's actually in front of the museum now. Those two cannons were from the 10th Artillery Battery here from Ohio. Give me that next slide. Now, I want to talk about what happened to these men that went to war here in Greene County. In 1860, the population of Xenia was, was 5,000 men and women and children. That was the whole population of Xenia at that time. Do you know, in one battle in 1861, it was, the, it was the Battle of Stones River. Stones River, I mean, we've heard of the Battle of Gettysburg, and that, the Battle of Gettysburg, more men died in a single day, it was around 54,000 men, than in any other war in the nation's history. 
But percentage-wise, Stones River was the worst carnage we ever saw. In terms of the men that actually went into that battle, more men died in that battle than in any other battle of the Civil War. And at that time, there was the 74th Regiment. They lost 187 men in one day. And, and out of that, there was 82 men from Xenia that died. That was 4% of the entire male population of the city died in one battle on one day. And we got 26,000 people in Xenia. That would be the equivalent of us losing 520 men and women in one battle in one day. Remember, this war went on day after day after day for four years. This is just one day of that war. I mean, we, we can't even conceive of what war was like. You know, you read some about World War II and Stalingrad where the Germans threw millions of men against millions of Soviet soldiers. And the Soviets at that time, they were just loading young men up on trains and shipping them off. And when they got off the train, they'd grab a rifle and they'd just throw them to the front. And you say, wow, what barbarity, but that would never happen here, right? Well, yeah, it did. Give me the next slide. In 1862, the Confederate Army was marching north, and they were invading Kentucky. And in, 18, in the fall of 1862, there, there was no army to stop them. So the call went out, and they just enlisted regiments to throw into a battle at that point. And on August 22nd, the 94th Ohio Regiment stood up in a single day, and they went into battle on August 28th. They literally formed them up in Camp Xenia. I want you to think about that. Can you imagine being in your 20s, just maybe having graduated from high school, and you go off to Camp Xenia? And the next day, they load you up in a train. And literally, six days later, you're fighting a horrendous battle. You had no time for training. You barely had time to even know who your officers were. When they, when they, when they got them down there, they only had enough to give each guy three bullets, three cartridges. And... Over that fall, 300 young men out of that regiment died. Just in that one year, in the fall, 300 men. And a lot of those men were from Greene County, majority of them, and a lot of them were for Xenia as well. Well, as you can imagine, this went on. These are just two battles. Just two battles over this war. Go ahead, give me the next slide. So, after this war went on for four years and just ground men up, okay, and it finally ended, guess what was left with the families? You know, you know, 10% of all the families in Greene County had lost a father or a son or a brother or a husband. There's a reason why the Ohio Veterans Children's Home, which was at that time called the Ohio Soldiers and Sailors Home, was formed here in Greene County, which is right across the street from us here, right? And there's a reason why folks in Xenia donated the land right across the street for an orphan's home. It's because there were so many orphans in our city. There were so many orphans per capita more in Greene County than any other county in Ohio. And this is what it, it said. It says, the institution originated as a home for children of veterans of the war who had died or for those children of veterans whose families lacked sufficient resources to care for them. And, you know, there were thousands of orphans at that home from the Civil War.
Go ahead and give me the next slide. So, in 1866, <laughs> a year after this, this, there wasn't a family in this city or a family in this county that wasn't impacted, either having lost somebody or having somebody in their extended family who had died or a neighbor who had died or some family that had kids that were, weren't making it and they desperately needed a place to live. And people... <laughs> They didn't know what else to do but to go to the graves because <laughs> there was nothing else to do that year. People were numb from the horror of war and they were numb from just the death. And they were, grown, they were drawn to go to the graves to try and make some sense about what had just gone on for four years. And they went as a community to do that. Well, that's, that's what Decoration Day looked like in 1866, okay? Well, what did Memorial Day look like in 2021, this last week? Go ahead and give me the next slide. Well, this is, this is a, a picture a Woodland Cemetery. I don't even know how many of you have actually even been to Woodland Cemetery here in Xenia. And if you know that there's a veteran section. And many of the tombstones of the men who died in the war are out there. And I would just challenge you sometime just to take a day and go walk. Many of the tombstones, you can't even read them anymore. Right? Because it's been... It's been 160 years since then, but many of you still can. Go ahead, give me the next slide. Here's a picture of just one I saw. It says, John H. Forbes, born May 6th, 1842, killed in battle near Atlanta on July 22nd, 1864. How old was he? 22 years old, right? And this is just one of hundreds. Cherry Grove Cemetery out on Upper Bellbrook, 2nd Street. Maybe you don't even know that's a cemetery there. It's, it's right next to Bridges of Hope, Nazarene Church across the street from there. Uh, that's the historically African-American cemetery. There's, there's, they have a Civil War veteran section in the back of the Cherry Grove. Sixty men who died during the war are buried back there as well, too. Those are just a couple of spots here in Greene County where folks were going on Decoration Day to honor folks. Yeah, go ahead and give me the next slide. But the reality is, in America, in 2021, the thing you got in the mail wasn't, hey, remember the men and women who died so that we could show up here and have the freedom to come to worship today, right? And not worry about anything. Or have the freedom to go vote or Say whatever you want to say on Facebook, right? Do that kind of stuff. No, no, we're not. No, what I got in the mail was five flyers to remind me about the Memorial Day sales, right? You don't want to miss out on stuff that you didn't know you needed, but it's on sale, so maybe I really needed it now, right? And I wasn't planning on going and buying it, but maybe, shoot, it's such a good deal, I ought to go buy it, right? That was the big thing that we were promoting over the weekend. Or maybe it was a picnic, right? Go have a picnic. It's the first, remember it was supposed to be the first good weekend of the summer, right? It's kind of chilly last week, but a lot of people had picnic plans or open the pools up, right? Get the splash pads going, doing all that kind of stuff, right? It's the kickoff to summer. Well, wow. Give me, give me the next slide. Well, it made me think a little bit. Go ahead and click that one more time. It made me say, what's Oh, go back, go back one more. Sorry. What, what is the difference <laughs> between the way we celebrated this day in 1866 and the difference of how we were celebrating it in 2021? And part of it is we just don't feel that impacted by war and death today. And it's been 
160 years since all these people died. And you know what? Time makes us do what? Makes us forget. And other things that are nearer to us are a lot more important than that, right? You know, I, I worked out at the base for 34 years, and one of the vaults I worked at, we had a sign over the door. You know what it said? It said, make sure your job is to make sure the other guy dies for his country. And we took that to heart. And, and let me tell you, today, for us, war is so removed, and we're so good at it as a nation that we lose so few people that we don't, we don't think about that. So we have more time to think about our sales and our picnics, right? Because that's what's important to us. And that, unfortunately, I'm not disparaging anybody in this room. I just tell you, unfortunately, us as a nation, that's where Memorial Day has gotten. Now, there are folks that have lost folks lately, and you did find them, because I did go out on Memorial Day to the two cemeteries here in town, and there were people that were there, but nothing like the whole city going out, right? Time tends to make us forget sacrifices. It just does. And if you don't focus on it, you will forget those sacrifices. And it'll just be ancient history. And pretty soon, it's so ancient history, we don't even study it anymore. We don't know anything about it. Hmm. Well, that brings us to this Sunday in June of 2021. Go ahead and give me that next slide. And part of the reason we're here today is to remember another sacrifice. Remember that? Go ahead and give me the next one there. I want, I want to share some verses with you. For I received from the Lord what also I passed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, this is my body. It's going to be broken for you. Which is for you? And he says, do this in what? In remembrance. Do you know why he said, I want you to remember? Because it's going to be easy for us to forget. Right? Go ahead. Give me the next slide. And in the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this, what? In remembrance of me as often as you drink it. Yeah. Why do we need to do this? Some churches have communion every Sunday. Ours does it once a month. When I grew up, I was in a church that we did it once a year. Different churches have different ways of, of remembering this. But we're all called to do this in the body of Christ because you know why? How many years has it been since Christ sacrificed himself? Well, depending upon how you look at the calendar, 2,000 plus, right? It's been a long time. And maybe it's been a long time since, since the day that you came into the body of Christ and were in awe that you had a God that would forgive you of all of the rotten things that you had done. It's been time. And guess what time does? It makes us what? Forget sacrifice. And so that's why it's so desperate for us to come and remember today that sacrifice of Christ for us. And part of it is there's some stuff we need to be reminded about ourselves that we don't like to think about. Now, it's easy to get on Facebook and find out problems with somebody else, right? And put it out there. Or Snapchat or whatever else you want to use on social media, right? Nobody likes bringing up their own issues, right? But you know what God does? He reminds us of where we were. Give me that next slide here. He says, don't forget, right? Remember. Don't forget that you used to be outsiders in those days and you lived in this world without God and without hope. Do you know what without hope means? Without hope means it doesn't matter what you do, nothing is going to change. There is no hope. 
And what's the hope he's talking about here? He says, there's no hope of being restored to God. He says, don't you forget that's who you used to be, right? And that's for us old folks like me and Galen, and that's for you young folks as well too. Everybody in this room was without hope and without God. Go ahead and give me that next slide. And thank goodness for the best two words in the whole Bible, which says, but God, (laughs) right? But God, because if God was just just, that's where we would stay is without hope. And we would get exactly what we had earned. Because what? The wages of sin is what? Death. And every one of us was working hard at being idiots and doing foolish things, right? You know, I was down with a group from Bridges of Hope. We were cleaning up down at the courthouse yesterday, and there's a big marble thing down there. And guess what's written on it? The Ten Commandments, yeah. But you know what? The Ten Commandments never saved anybody because we all broke them all, right? Ten Commandments is just a mirror to let us take a look at ourselves and see how ugly we were and are and how hopeless we are. That's all it is. Yeah. But listen to this. He says, but now God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law, without keeping those Ten Commandments, because we're all liars, right? We're all disrespectful of our parents. We all envied what other people had. We're all murderers. Oh, no, I'm not a murderer. What do you mean? Oh, no, no. Remember what Jesus said. He says, you've heard it said, don't kill. But he says, but if you're angry with your brother in your heart, it's the same thing. Well, I'm there. I'm a murderer, right? If I go down all of those, I've, I've, I've blown them all. And so have you, right? Thank God he's given us a way to be right with him without keeping those things because we couldn't do that. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. By remembering what? That he took our sins and died on the worst way that the Roman Empire that had been around for 200 years, one of the most evil things mankind could come up with, and they had perfected the worst way that they knew how to kill somebody. And they were good at it because they killed a lot of people. And that's how Jesus got to die, right, on being crucified. Because they couldn't figure out any worse way to kill him. That was the worst way they could think of. For God presented Jesus as a what? As a sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. There's only two kinds of people in this room. There are those... (laughs) It said, God, I desperately need to get restored with you, and I can't do it on my own, and you provided a way, and I'm going I'm to humble myself and take that because I, I got nothing, right? That's one kind of people in this room. And the only other kind of people in this room are the ones who know about this because we just talked about it, and you probably heard about it, but you haven't chosen to accept it yet. That's, that's all there is in this room, right? There's nobody else. Go ahead and give me the next slide. He says, and this is what it cost Christ to bring us to him. He says, who being in the very nature God, remember? He'd been with the Father and the Holy Spirit from eternity past in a perfect relationship of love and joy and peace and fellowship. And he stepped away from that to be viewed as sin, as something ugly and condemned. He did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. He says, no, rather he made himself nothing. Nothing. By taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in the appearance of as a man, and he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death, on a cross, right? And he did all that so that because (laughs) he was looking forward to the joy of having us, the ones 
who were ugly and rancid and running away from him as hard as we could without nothing of value and having us restored to him. And not only that, he wanted us to participate in that fellowship with the Father and the Holy Spirit that he had anticip- that he'd participated with from eternity past. He said, I want you to come and be part of this and enjoy an amazing relationship, not only today, but for all of eternity. Remember, he says, I don't call you what? Servants, I call you my what? My friends. He says, I declared you to be holy in my sight, forgave us of all of our sins, gave us the Holy Spirit to be resident with us, gave us spiritual gifts, gave us the body of Christ, right? He says, he says in Hebrews, we can boldly come into his presence at any minute of any day, never rejected. And he says, and I will understand everything that goes on because I suffered it as well. And so if you've been abandoned by family or friends, or you've been faced discouragements and people that walked away from you and things that aren't happening, well, he says, I've been there because I walked that so I could understand you. So when you come to me, I, you know you have a God that understands where you're at, but also you have a God who is all-powerful as well and can walk with you. And he's the, he's the, the good shepherd that walks with us when the valleys are green and lush, and he's the good shepherd that walks with us when? When we walk through the valley, the valley of shadow and fear and death. He says, I will walk with you every step of that way. You will never be alone. Give me the next slide. He says, he says that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenant of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Jesus Christ you are once who were far away, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. And that is what Christ is calling us to remember today as we take communion and be in awe that a God who didn't need us sought us out and gave everything to let us come and be with him. And But you know what? We got issues with money, and we got issues with health, and we got issues with relationships, and we ain't got enough time, and we got so much entertainment, we don't know how to do with it, and it crowns out remembering this stuff, right? And he says, no, take some time and remember this. Go on the next slide. There was a, a theologian by the name of Dietrich Bonhoeffer that was with the church in Germany. And I don't know if you know much about what happened in the church of Germany when Hitler came in, but Hitler said, I like the church. This sounds like a really good tool for us to use to get people into nationalist socialism. So uh, they replaced in the churches uh, communion and they took the scriptures out and they replaced it with Mein Kampf and they used it as basically a time to worship Nazism and Hitler. And there were a lot of churches and pastors that said, this is terrible, but they didn't know what to do. Well, a few, a few guys in Germany stood up and said, this is wrong. And Dietrich Bonhoeffer was one of those guys. And the Nazis weren't playing because if you stood up against them, they either killed you or they sent you off a camp. And you know what Dietrich Bonhoeffer said? He said, that's okay. Because he remembered. He remembered the sacrifice of his God for him. And he was more in awe of the king of heaven's armies than he was of all the things that Hitler had and all the power and control that Hitler had in his country. He was more in awe because he remembered that. And this is what he wrote from prison. He said, cheap grace is the preaching of forgiveness without repentance, baptism without church discipline, communion without confession. And you know what? There are a lot of us who maybe need to confess some today before we take communion. Absolution without personal confession. Cheap grace is grace without discipleship, grace without the cross, grace without Jesus Christ living and incarnate. 
we need to make sure that today, and I don't know what was going on with you this week as you walked in the worship service today, but take some time before you take communion today and remember the sacrifice of our God for us. And if you know him already, take some time to be in awe of that and, and look back on your week and ask the Holy Spirit, maybe some things that have been going on you know have grieved the Holy Spirit. And remember what 1 John 1 says. It says, if we confess our sins, he's what? He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Maybe you need to do that before you take communion today. And maybe you don't know who Jesus is yet as your Savior. You know of him. You've heard of him. You've, you've read the stories. You've heard about him. But you actually haven't taken the time to say, I need your death to pay for my sins because I can't do it on my own. And if that's who you are, you shouldn't be taking communion today because you have nothing to remember yet, right? But maybe you need to ask God to do that this morning before communion. And then you can take communion and you can remember right then what God has done for you. That's what communion is about for us today. Greg, you want to come up and, and share with us? Don't, America has made Memorial Day a cheap holiday. Because for the most of us, we don't remember what it was all about. Don't let communion this morning be a cheap time for you. Because it was costly for God. It was horrendous for God. Go ahead, Greg. Greg.